Are you ready to rant about money, James? I was born ready. Thanks for bringing me on. I really appreciate it. Tell us, what do you create on the YouTube? Just quick about my story a little bit to give some context. So I was a software developer and I was helping store different companies with e-commerce stuff and was kind of enjoying that. I was making a lot of money but I didn't have the time that I wanted. My daughter was born and then my other two kids were born. And, you know, I'd wake up in the morning, go to work, get home late at night. They'd go to bed an hour after I got home. And I was just like, I want more time with my kids. And so I kind of started a, a side hustle. I built a business and grew that to seven figures. And then I sold that business and hopped on YouTube. So now I had all this money to play with. So I started getting into investing. I started doing real estate and stocks and dividends, got into crypto, then just really wanted other people to have, you know, first the financial freedom and then the time freedom that I enjoyed. I didn't feel good that it was like, oh, I get this. But most people just have to wake up and go to their nine to five every day. So I really designed my channel to create content to help people get out of their nine to five, get side hustles going, use their money in a way to make passive income, just to get that, that time freedom and financial freedom uh, for everybody, everybody who watches. Okay, I'm gonna devil's advocate a little bit on this yeah. because a lot of the people that listen to the podcast, they're like aspiring creators, they're trying to get out of their nine to five, which I know is 100% like your target viewer. But you have gone into the education of passive income with an existing life like pool of money to fall back on in case it didn't work out like you would be okay. How do you navigate that with your audience? And what do you tell to creators that are like, well, it's so easy for you, you already have money? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, and I've kind of shifted in my channel over the years, because I started doing mostly investing. But then I realized, oh, 90% of my viewers don't have the capital needed to do investing. So I kind of shifted more to side hustles and just helping people. And then how I did it, I'm actually, most people think of entrepreneurs as super risky people, but I'm actually pretty risk adverse. And so when I started my initial business and my YouTube channel, I did it on the side um, and then you can kind of see, you know, how it's going, start building up that revenue, building up that audience. I mean, I didn't end up quitting my nine to five until I had this other income stream that was already going to replace it. So it really wasn't that risky. I just would do it in the evening. I do it on the weekends. You know, you work Monday through Friday, but you got Saturday and Sunday that are pretty free. And so, okay, I'm going to work my nine to five. I'm going to get home after the kids go to bed. I'm going to work a couple extra hours on my side hustle. going to spend Saturday morning working on it. And eventually it grew to the point, oh, I'm making more from, from this than I am from my nine to five. And then it's real easy to make that jump. It's not even really a jump. It's just like, okay, it's already there, ready to go. So I recommend that to people. I know people have bills to pay. So it's not like you can just, okay, quit your job and start a YouTube channel, but you can do it on the side to start with. Cause it is, it is kind of slow growing at the beginning. And so, you know, you might, your first, you, you know, when you, even when you get to a thousand uh, subscribers or monetized. It's like, okay, well, now I'm making $100 a month. Great. And it's like, well, I can't live on that. And so just grow it on the side until you get to the point where, okay, I'm ready to make this this jump here. I love that breakdown too. Like, And I, and I think this is advice a lot of full-time YouTubers will say, which is like, if you have bills, if you have responsibilities, if like they're like, you still have to like do this to build up to your nine to five. It's almost like asking yourself, it's almost like the comparison of like, I have a job and I go to school afterwards to like go get my D yeah. to become a doctor or a master's or like whatever this. So instead of going into school for a degree, it's like, okay, I'm going to spend time building out this other business, other thing I want to do that can ultimately replace my my current job or situation in the same way almost that like a degree could as well so i think that like analogy like that you're talking about is really important for people to remember especially i feel like it's good advice in like i, I call this our post-covid creator world because like everyone we've talked to a lot of people who have like become successful pre COVID. And I feel like it's a totally like different ball game. So definitely, I think in our post-COVID, if you're getting started now or starting to like inch way your way towards it, the advice to do it on in addition to your job is really powerful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I want to give just if there's any listeners that are younger, that is a great time to spot start. So many people waste their 20s. And that's the time where you actually like you don't have a ton of responsibility yet. Um, you don't have, you know, maybe kids or a family quite yet. And so it's like, okay, now's the time where you could take some risks. You could kind of step out there. Unfortunately, we spend our 20s 
you know, we're just wasting time for the most part, which I'm fine with, you know, doing some pastimes and things like that. But once you get a family, it's going to be way harder. You're going to have way less time. You're going to have way less energy. And so, you know, if you're younger and you're watching, get started today. Because it might take, YouTube can be a very slow journey for people. I've seen people who um, they're eventually successful and eventually able to make some money from it. But some people, it takes, you know, five years before they start to make a good amount of money from YouTube. And so start start young. You can get going early. I could not agree with you more. As someone who started her YouTube channel while like my kids were still little, like my kids were under three, I was still like breastfeeding one. Like there were still diapers in my life. I went through this really big like phase where I was like, I had so much single childless people envy because I'm like, it's so easy for them. They have so much time. It's so obvious that like, yeah, three people can live in a studio apartment and you can just like make content all day, all the time. That's got to be so easy and nice. I'm like, I'm over here with like my bills and my husband in the military and like trying to figure out how to like squeeze in a video recording between naps and stuff. It's so impactful. And I almost want to tell people like, you know how people have the thing where it's like, I went to college, like just in case I want to like start a YouTube channel, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> Cause like you never know how it's going to go or change or grow. And like, Ugh, just like take that time. And I love the like, almost like we spend so much time in our 20s, like figuring out who we are and what we want to be and where we want to go. And I think that that's where like the being dumb and making mistakes, like you have to have that. But you can also be doing something for your future self in the time in the same way that like you could start investing or going to college. Building a YouTube channel, I think almost has that like same effect. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, having an audience of any kind, whether it be on YouTube or an email list or Twitter following, whatever whatever it is, building an audience just opens up so many doors in so many ways in your future. And again, it can be a slow process. You might add, you know, 20 subscribers a month. Well, then it's like, well, start now. And then, you know, 20 subscribers a month times 12 months a year times five years, you're starting to make your way. Just get that audience because you don't know what the future is going to hold. But having an audience that follows you, I think is a, it's, it's really powerful um, think it's opened up so many doors for me. And when I'm done with YouTube, if I'm ever done, I enjoy it. So I don't know if I'll ever be done. But um, I have so many connections and different I'm advising different companies. And it all came from people seeing my YouTube content, and then saying, Hey, we want to work with this guy. And it's just it's opened up so many doors. So just get get that audience going. I think it's that's great advice. Okay, so you had a nine to five, you're an engineer, you built this company, you sold it all along the way, you're doing this YouTube thing, your dad ended it up and stuff like that. Walk us through the, we're gonna talk, let's isolate our income talk around like YouTube specifically. When did you first start making money from your YouTube channel in a way that made you connect like, hey, I could, this could actually be it, this could be the thing. Yeah, yeah, so um, I kind of have a unique journey. So I, when I sold my business, I was kind of just looking for something to do. I was kind of bored, you know, we're designed to work. People think, oh, I can't wait till I can retire and watch Netflix all day. And you watch Netflix all day for one day, I guarantee you're gonna be looking for something else to do, I, I hope. And uh, so I was in that boat, I'm a builder and I sold my company and it was, you know, your company's kind of a part of your identity. So I kind of woke up I'm like, I don't know what to do today. And so I started getting into investing and um, different side hustles, and I was really enjoying it. And uh, it was actually my wife. I kept telling her about, hey, I'm buying these vending machines, and I'm going to start this and this. And she said, you know what? That's amazing. I'm kind of busy raising the kids and stuff. And uh, maybe if you want to bring your ideas to, to somebody else, I love you, but I, I don't care about entrepreneurism. And I'm like, well, who do I share it with? Everybody's busy. And she said, start a YouTube channel. And uh, so I really, when I started my channel, I had no goals for it. I was just like, you know what? I have some things I'm excited about, I think are cool. I'm just going to start a, a channel. And you know, you get monetized at a thousand subscribers. And I thought, okay, if in six months, I'll make, con I'll make content for six months. If I get to a thousand subscribers, it's an income stream and I enjoy it. And uh, about three months in, I was at 30,000 subscribers and uh, it really just blew up right at the beginning. And uh, so then I kind of, you know, I'm like, oh, I think this actually is a thing. Like this is, uh, this is crazy how fast it's growing. And then you have to kind of guard your emotions a little bit because when you have huge growth like that, you do reach plateaus and you reach valleys 
And so you can't just think, oh, I'm going to be adding 30,000 subscribers a month for the rest of my life. Uh, that's just, that's not the entrepreneur journey. So you have to set yourself up. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be easy times, but that's when kind of I saw people are connecting with what I'm talking about. So I'm going to keep talking about it and just kind of see where it goes. I always like to ask the counter to this too. So along your YouTube journey, what was the biggest money mistake that you encountered or made? This isn't really YouTube specific, but in investing to make in for the purpose of making content, I would get in, I'd put my money into riskier investments than I probably would have if I wasn't putting it up on YouTube. But and then I'd put it up on YouTube. And then one mistake was people would watch what I did. And then they would think, oh, I should do that too. He's wealthy. He's doing this. I should do that. And that's not really what I was intending with my channel. I was intending, hey, I have a bunch of money. I'm just going to play around with it, doing this stuff. So I had to kind of shift my messaging over the years to just, you know, what you're intending and what your audience is getting from it uh, is often different. And so you just have to kind of listen to your audience, read your comments, reply to your comments, get to know your subscribers. Um, and just look to provide value for your subscribers going forward. But that was a that was a big mistake that I had to kind of and this has happened several times in my channel where I've just had to shift a little bit like, hey, I'm going down this direction. It's not connecting with my audience. And I run a lot of polls with my audience and things like that. Like I just started golfing and I asked, hey, would you guys like to watch me learn to golf? I think that'd be kind of funny content. And the poll said, yes, but not on your main channel. Start a new channel and you can go ahead and do that. Um, so that's something I might be doing here. Uh, I want to get a little better because it's embarrassing uh, for now. But soon. Isn't that kind of the point? I, yeah. it, it is, but it's like, it's pretty bad at this moment. But that is something I'm planning to start. I just bought a lapel mic, so I'm going to take it out on the golf, golf course and just kind of film me going around to different golf courses, learning how to, in, interviewing different experts and kind of starting a golf channel. So that's that's kind of something separate that I'm going to be doing. But I enjoyed a YouTube channel so much, I'm starting a second one. So there, that's a testimony. Just so I can understand, your biggest financial mistake is that like you were doing things to test and risk with your own money for your channel. And what ended up happening is your audience was saw you doing it and they thought that they should do it too. And it became, became like a financial problem for them because it yeah. didn't work out for you. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, and then uh, sometimes they would hold you responsible. So that's something to keep in mind is you have to be kind of careful what you put out there, especially in the financial realm. But people would watch and then they would come back to me and say, hey, you said to get into this. And I did. And I lost a bunch of money. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I was intending. I guess I need to shift my messaging just to be more clear. But yeah, that was that was a pretty challenging time. And, you know, another thing I'll say to creators, too, is you have to get used to to people not liking you. Um, when you put yourself out there publicly, um, you know, when you have a thousand subscribers, pretty much they all love you. But when you get up to 50,000 subscribers, you know, if 1% of the people don't like you, well, that's 500 people that really don't like you. And then, you know, out of that 500, there might be a couple that are like hostile to you for some reason. I, who knows? Something in their life, I'm sure. Um, they're probably their girlfriend broke up with them. I don't know. Um, but you just have to be ready for that. I was, I'm a huge people pleaser. And so it was a, it was a huge shock for me when I started having people who didn't like me and I would try to please everybody, but you just, you can't please 50, 60,000 people. Like that's just not, you can't please everybody. And uh, so that's been a big part of my personal growth has been just, you know what, no matter what you do, there's going to be somebody upset with you and it's more of a reflection on them than it is on you. And you just have to be true to yourself and just keep putting yourself out there. Now, if 99% of the people hate you, you might be doing something wrong. Uh, but um, don't don't let the haters stop you. Uh, it's been great for me and just getting over that people pleasing. So I, I love the saying, you can't make everyone happy. You're not a taco. Yeah, <laughs> so. amen. Hey, that's a good one. I love tacos. <laughs> you know, that's a good so, one. And so it just is kind of those like sort of those interesting things but that had been really hard. Like I can't imagine like it's put a lot of pressure and responsibility. I get really upset when like, a customer doesn't renew a contract with me and it's not because of anything wrong. It's just like 
we're going a different way or we have we're going to allocate our budget in a different way and i'm like what did oh, i do wrong and like it's just like what can i do better like it just becomes this because it's so hard for me I'm, I'm i don't know why i don't know what's happened in my life where i'm just like why doesn't everyone want to just like be my friend and hang out i'm like i i'm great i'm a party person but no it's like i totally get that you can't be for everybody you can't make everybody happy and it's not so much and this is where i think the whole youtube thing comes into place where people are like oh it's over saturated oh like someone's already talking about what i want to talk about it's like no like there's a lot of people that talk about youtube and how to make money and stuff but we all have different ways that we do it and different methods that work for us and different ways that we get successful i mean i say all the time on youtube which is which is one of the big things i love about this podcast that we do is that like there's no one way to be successful on youtube and there's no one way like there's no one person that is the only one that can talk about how to do something in our space like well there can only be like you know one jimmy donaldson or one you know mark rober it, it's still very much but there's also other people out there that do entertaining science money giveaway like that all that kind of content and stuff so it's really important for people to understand that like your voice matters and when you can really lock in on who you are and you can portray that online not only will you be able to really find your target audience but you'll also really be able to find money to allow for you to keep doing it yeah yeah absolutely i've found that i've found that what draws people to my channel is the authenticity and transparency because a lot of times and this is a challenge as your youtube channel grows there is pressure to be more you know, have more production and it stops becoming like you know just you being authentic and transparent about what's going on in your life and people connecting to you and it becomes like a mr beast video where it's like very production and it's like well i don't think mr beast cares about me personally or knows me personally but you're just true to yourself and you know as the number of creators on youtube goes up the number of watchers goes up way faster long ways away from being saturated just because more and more people are watching youtube more and more of the time people are turning off their tvs my kids we used to say hey we'd sit down and say what netflix show do you want to watch and now every time we sit down they say hey we want to get on we want to watch youtube we want to show you this yeah mark rover is a big one for them uh we want to show you this mr beast video and uh so youtube i think is becoming more and more of a, a staple of our entertainment and media here and so i think this is a great time to get into youtube i don't i think we're at a it doesn't have to be hard like you have to be like, there's some foundational things like the most important thing that you'll ever create is your thumbnail and your title right and like we we all scream that from the mountaintops but like you can it's, it's, it's all about being able to connect and tell a good story and hold people's attention and they did a nelson report that like a very large percentage i don't want to say what the exact number is i don't know but a very large people are watching youtube over netflix and disney plus and all these other apps on their tv as well so like when we're when you're thinking through the kind of content you can make it's like what would go well on a tv that people could walk what, watch what would you can you do this episodic like how do you make this bingeable you know netflix library of content that people would want to go watch and like that's what you know we're all trying to work towards and as you get started like you kind of lean into that stuff and i think that the biggest misconception is this need for production like don't get me wrong like you need to have like a solid camera but it can be your iphone camera just make sure you clean your lens like nothing's worse than that big oily thumbprint over your yeah, right. camera right we've all done that but uh it's just it's it's doing that kind of stuff yeah so, can i say too just to piggyback on that that uh when i started my channel i had zero production so i was doing my own like i was just using my macbook camera and i didn't have a microphone i was just using the macbook microphone and you can start with that so don't don't yes. feel like a lot of people i've seen that they're waiting on their youtube journey because they're like oh well i need the right ring light and I need the right camera and I don't have the funds to get a nice microphone like you have. And it's like, you know what, just get going. The first thing people told me was, hey, your audio is bad. After a couple months, I'm like, okay, and I bought a microphone. And then after a while, people are like, hey, you know, your camera doesn't look the best. You should think about getting, so then I got a camera and I just kind of slowly upgraded things as I got bigger, as I had more funds to play with. Don't let your technology or your production value, or you thinking I can't edit videos, just start putting something out there. Every YouTube creator, Mr. Beast included, when you look at his early stuff, it was terrible. You have to suck. Like it is a rite of passage on YouTube. You have to make bad videos. Like, that is the only way you can figure out how to do this and be better and make yourself 
glow up and stuff. Like I, I'm the exact same way. I started with a random webcam. I didn't have any good audio. I had a wind, my lighting, my lighting was like my window, you know? So like if it rained that day, I wasn't able to film anything. Yes. I think my, my mic I bought, I bought like a, a blue Yeti. I still have, I use it on my other computer. I got it used off of eBay. Like, you, like, and with now it's like, we have Facebook marketplace. You can just go buy anything. Like I know I, bought I've bought cameras used off of there and stuff just because I needed something that would work. So there's never an excuse for it. Blue Yeti was my start too. Yeah. Like and like I and I, I literally still have it. I use it. I have like the, I again we're talking about product like we upgrade, we do stuff. I have an unfinished basement and I like, I have a whole studio set up. But at my computer where I work, it's where it is. That's where I do like my Zoom calls with people all the time still. Yeah. What was your most successful financial moment as a YouTuber? For my YouTube channel, um, I was doing a lot of cryptocurrency stuff. And I started the first time somebody got on and they're like, Hey, we need a video out today for this project there's a coin launch or something like that and i was like i i don't think i can record a video and get it edited and get it out today like i just they're like well we need it today and i said well i've heard about these youtube lives let's go ahead and just try a youtube live and then i can get the info out you can come on the, with me um and it went super well everybody loved it they loved that they could interact and ask questions as i was doing the live I started having all these different companies ask me, hey, can we come on and do a live with you? Uh, we saw how well that went for with them. And so at first I was like, hey, this is great content for my channel. Then somebody was like, do you charge for people to come on to do those lives? And I, I said, no, I don't. They said, you should be charging. And I'm like, what do you think I should be charging? And they said, you should be charging like four or $5,000. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm doing it for free right now. And so I started charging for those. And the same number of people were coming on. Like I the charging didn't seem to impact the number of people that were coming to do it. And so when I found sponsorships and affiliates, originally I was seeing YouTube as just the AdSense revenue, which is not really that much. It's not as much as you think it is. People are like, you have 60,000 subscribers, surely full-time YouTube you could, but it's like, no, I'm, I'm making, you know, 2K a month from my AdSense revenue. That's not enough to live on really. But these affiliates, these sponsorships, the connections that turn into ad, you know, advising, being asked to speak. I've been asked to speak at several conferences, and it's just because I'm on YouTube. That's really my only credential uh, is, hey, you're a YouTuber. Come, come speak at this conference. And when I discovered that, um, it really shifted the way I viewed YouTube. I was like, hey, this is actually a business. This isn't just a hobby. This isn't just something that I'm doing, but this is a business. Like I, People are businesses are relying on me. And uh, that was a real wake up moment for me just got me thinking in a different direction. That was probably the uh, the peak I was pretty excited. I, t I told my wife, Hey, actually, this YouTube stuff is making quite a bit of money now. She's like, good job. I told you to do it. So I think I get the credit for it. And I, I was like, like you I know, want half. <laughs> yeah, I want to have Yeah, exactly. So that was that was a huge, huge thing for me. That's something I encourage young creators to think about when you get your personal brand going. It's like, well, you know, creating a training course for whatever your niche is. If you're doing a gardening channel, it's like, well, you can do a training course, how to get your garden set up, you know, things like that. There's just, there's a lot of different ways that you can monetize and it's all around providing more value for your audience. So you don't think money first, that's a six, you know, that's a way to ruin, but you think value first, what would be valuable? What are problems my audience have that I can solve? I have the knowledge, the passion or just the willingness to get on and talk about it. And uh, once you start doing that, you you start to find little pockets, revenue streams, income streams, um, not just AdSense, but a lot of other stuff as well. One of the things that you have done that, I mean, we particularly love at Gigastar is that you have done a drop with us. So walk us through what that decision was and like, what was the experience like? What are you doing with the funds? Like, Tell us, tell us all the things. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So it was actually my community that came to me. So I have a paid community of like people who just want to like, we have a telegram group where we're all talking and stuff like that. And they actually approached me said, Hey, have you ever heard of Gigastar? We would love to have like part ownership in your channel going forward. Like we want to be part of this. And so I was kind of like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to like, I like my, I don't want to give up ownership necessarily, but then I had enough people from the community who were like, we want to be part of this with you though. And so that was really the driver where I reached out to Gigastar 
And at first I was not, I was kind of like, eh, I'll schedule a call or whatever. Um, but then we talked on the call and I was like, you know what, this actually could be, could be really good. It gives my audience, I think my audience can make real money from investing in this over the, I plan to grow. And so if you invest now, then when I grow, that will be very profitable and really just wanted my community to feel more like they're a part of what I'm doing. I started putting out um, like surveys. What content would you like to see more of? Um, I have for people who bought like my higher end diamonds and things like that. I give them like a topic suggester where they can say, hey, make a video about this. And it goes right to me. And um, I look through those. So that was really the the decision was, OK, my community wants it. It looks like it'll be good. And then with the money that I've gotten from it, um, a lot of what I'm doing is working on better production. So I bought paying a better video editor was one thing that my audience and I kind of let my community like, hey, what would you like to see improved? Another thing that I have really done is I upgraded my equipment was another thing. And then I got started on some paid advertising, too, which is a it's a difficult thing to navigate on YouTube, but you can use it strategically to get more views on certain videos, which in turn tells the algorithm, hey, this is a better video, which gets more organic views. The paid views aren't nearly as valuable as the organic views, but you can use paid views in a strategic way to get more organic views. So that's for now. You know, I've only been, I've, we finished the drop, I think maybe two months ago or a month ago. And uh, but that's so far, that's what I'm doing. But I'm letting my audience kind of drive the ship in a lot of ways. Yes. And and like in full disclosure, too, like I bought one, like I bought into hey. one, of, one of the one of your drops to get like just because I, I really one of the things about GigaStar I've, I've always believed in because I've been I've been doing this for so long. I've been in content creation for 15 years. I've been a YouTuber for seven, eight now, whatever. I love investing in creators. I love and, and whether it's like giving them time or helping them grow or figuring out what they can do next, buying their merch, going to their shows, like buying their music. Like I just love it because it's, it's supporting my space. And then I just love watching people grow and like see like them reach like these ordinary people reaching their like full potential. Like I'm a nineties kid. Like I grew up like all, everyone was like, oh my gosh, didn't see Britney Spears and all of these things. And like, you're like, this is so cool. I want to do that. But we didn't have any obtainable way to get to that. Now anybody can be famous for anything. Yep. Anyone can be successful, no matter like what your age, race, gender, location. Like if, if you've got a phone and access to the internet some way, you can do something impactful. And I love being able to support creators on their journey. And I think what's so cool about what Gigastar does is that it allows for creators who are who are smaller because like even like for context like james james is sitting at just under fifty eight thousand subscribers on his youtube channel and for some people they'd be like oh you're a small creator and like to other people like wow that's a huge creator you know it allows for creators to have that influx of capital so that they can do the things to take it to their their business to the next level like people aren't just like buying houses with this like they're literally investing into their businesses and it's such a fun thing to be a part of and I love that you've been able to successfully do a drop and then be able to invest in like better equipment and an editor and things like that. From doing that, how has it improved what you're doing so far with your business? Well, a lot of what it's done actually has freed up my time. Um, that was one big emphasis. I guess I should have mentioned that what I'm doing with the money, but um, a lot of it was freeing up my time from from editing and things like that. I can pay people to do better research. I can pay people to do better editing. And that frees me up to just ideate, like just, okay, talk with the community more. I used to have a terrible time responding to comments because, you know, you get 50 comments a day and it's like, it's kind of the last thing on your to do for the day. And I'm just like, oh, I can't respond to all these people. But when you're able to use, use some money to be able to invest, because I'm, I'm kind of a penny pincher too. So it was a long time before I was even willing to talk with a thumbnail. I used to do all my own thumbnails on Canva. Like I would, and they were terrible. They were awful. If you look at my early channel, I would just be me. And then I just put a word in a bubble or something like that. And, uh, but when I started, you know, when you pay someone who's good at it, it frees your time up and it's better done. So, and it was really finances that were holding me back from doing some of those things. So yeah, freeing up my time and that's made me just be able to, I can put more time into the content itself. Like I used to be so rushed where, uh, you know, a video, 
I would just put put out a few ideas like that. That was all that was on my screen when I would start recording was a couple ideas. And then I would just start talking and I'd end up, you know, you kind of ramble and you lose track of where you're going. And now I do a, I outline the whole video. I get a good hook in there. I spend more time thinking about the the uh, thumbnail and title, like you said, and I can really do better the things that I'm doing. Started an, an ad campaign um, and things like that. So really freeing up my time has probably been what's been most valuable so far. I think that that is huge. People underestimate that because people get really, I think when people are like the, the hardest thing I think for anyone in business to do is to hire any for anything, even if it's like a contractor or a VA because if they're like, it's so much like, but no one can do it as good as me, but I have to spend money. How can I spend money to make money? Like there's just a lot of those, like, I think thought process hangups. And I know that once you do it, like for me, I'm such a unusual duck in this space. I have always had an editor because I had kids and I was like, I have a thousand things to do and I have two hours to do it. So like I have to remove any bottleneck that I could possibly have. And what's so funny to me is right now with my YouTube channel, I'm actually not having an editor. I'm just doing like me and the camera and like we're telling a story. And I'm like, Desiree, you've done this a thousand times. Like you don't like the editing is just all extra bonus work at this point. Like you don't fumble over your words. You're not reading a script or anything like you're just I outline what I'm going to talk about and I tape it next to my <laughs> my camera and I'm like, hey, let's, let's have a conversation because it doesn't need to be all the extras, bells and whistles and stuff. So it's, it's, it's just so interesting to see the journeys that people go on and how they invest and how they take away time and, and do all these different things. So yeah, that- absolutely. And you know, you have two, you have two capitals, you have two currencies, uh, you have money and you have time. And so you can kind of just figure out, okay, where in the journey am I at? Okay, I'm just starting. I don't have money but I do have to, a little bit of extra time. It's like, okay, you can edit your own stuff. You can do your own thumbnails, whatever. And then over time, the goal is that you get more money and then you can free up your time with your money. So you can use your money. You can trade your money for extra time. And at some point you have to, you make that shift where your time is more valuable than your money is. And uh, so, yeah, that's a, just to go along with what you're saying. It's, it's so much fun, like you said, to see different people's journeys. And don't think that your journey is going to be the same as anybody else's. No, um, you're going to have a unique niche. You're going to end up with an audience that's completely unique to you. There is no one that's going to have the exact same subscriber set that you have. Um, so it's going to be unique. And they're there for you, for the content you're putting out. And uh, so just you know, keep that in mind. Okay. So what we do that's unique on this podcast is that we break down your income streams by percentages uh, with our handy dandy pie chart situation. So your biggest income stream that you have comes from sponsorships. Who are some of your sponsors that you work with? How do those relationships come about? Do, do the thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, most of them are just different companies that want to come on for live videos. So they just want to present. Here's what we do. I require everyone to have like an educational section before they just pitch whatever it is that they do. It's like you can come on, but you have to teach something. You have to provide some value for people who don't want to buy whatever it is that you have on there. And we've done these as lives, which is really easy. You don't have to edit them at all. They're just out there. They're there ready to go. And then once a few people started finding them and saw how successful they were, that just brought in other people. And then it's kind of word of mouth in a lot of ways where people just start seeing, oh, hey, he brings on people to talk about their different businesses, their different side hustles, things like that. Uh, Maybe he'd bring us on. And so I start now when I wake up, like even this morning, I think I had 70 different people who were like, hey, can we come on the channel to talk about this? So that was one of the things I've done with my funds is I hired a collab manager to just like, Hey, I can't go through all 70 of these and look through what would be good. What would not be good. So he does kind of an initial look through where like, like this one, I just pulled up in my email. They said, we want to bring a massage chair onto your channel. My audience is not looking for that. Like it has nothing to do with what I do or anything. And so he's able to quickly go through those and say, no, that's thanks for your interest. We're not interested in that. I always get the ones for like video games. We would love to, we love your channel. I think it'll align great with our audience to have the 60 second spot in your educational online marketing videos about our new game warrior women or something. (laughs) 
Well, and then sometimes they forget to change the template. So it'll say, hello, first name. We love your content. We've been watching it for years. Would you be interested in bringing on this bath soap? It's like, you obviously have never seen any of my videos. But then, so we kind of go through that initial uh, filter process. And then my collab manager developed like a form for people to request a collab. So that's kind of like step two. And then, so I, I have it real nice. I just wake up and then there's a list of, hey, here were the six that seemed like they might be good fits. And I just go through and I just say thumbs up or thumbs down pretty much. I look through them a little bit. I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be good. And then he has it all automated now where he sends them a calendar link to schedule on my channel with the times that work. It's hooked up to my calendar and stuff like that. And uh, so that's where most of those come from. And that's that's been my biggest money maker has been just people wanting to come on the channel. And it's actually so sponsorships and affiliates would both be that same kind of thing. So the difference being uh, for people who don't know, but some sponsorships are usually they just pay to come on the channel. Affiliates are more however much you're able to sell will give you a percentage of that. So there's pros and cons to both. Over the years, I've made more from affiliates. Like when you put out a vi video with an affiliate, you could be making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars from that affiliate if it's if it's a really good one. But then you have affiliates who you come on and you sell one and you made seventy dollars, and it was like oh, okay. So sometimes the sponsorships work better. I was sponsored by Mint Mobile, so that's uh, Ryan uh, Reynolds his company. And so I was like, Hey, I'm a spokesperson for Mint Mobile and Ryan Reynolds is a spokesperson for Mint Mobile. So I'm basically Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. We're basically best friends. <laughs> we're basically best friends. And uh, so things like that. And those have been a lot of fun. I actually prefer the affiliates usually because yeah, just because then I only make money if it was beneficial for them and for my audience with sponsorships, I kind of make money no matter what, even if it's like, Oh, nobody liked it they didn't like it the audience didn't like it i still make money i actually prefer affiliates because it's like okay the audience liked it and i only make money if the company that brought i brought on made money so it, it seems more like i like win 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 relationships and uh, so i actually prefer affiliates but yeah those have been huge money makers for me your next income stream that is your your biggest beast is going to be affiliates, which you kind of just mentioned. I love affiliate and sponsorship partnerships because it's like the sponsors, essentially you're paying for attention. The affiliate is how we get paid for keeping that video up and live on the channel so that it stays relevant. So I think that that's super big. Your third biggest one, which is one I would love to talk a little bit very much about with you is your Amazon and creator programs. What is it? So is it like, are you doing Amazon influencer program? Is it another organization? Like what are, what are those for you? Yeah. So Amazon influencer program, just if anybody doesn't know what that is, it's kind of a newer program that Amazon started where you record reviews of different Amazon products. And then they put the review videos on the product pages. And if anyone watches your review and then buys the product, you get usually just two to 6%, depending on the, the product category. And uh, so I had somebody from my community again that reached out to me and they said, hey, do, do you know about this Amazon influencer program? We would love to help you get going with this. We would you know, take care of most of the work side of it. We just wanna use your influencer account to do this. And again, I was skeptical. I was like, yeah, I was like, ah, what is this? What are, what's going on here? I've never heard of this. But then when I looked into it, I was like, actually, this is really, really powerful. And so I kind of partnered with my community on this a little bit and they buy the products and then do reviews on them. And I think we have 600 videos uploaded, but it's making 3K a month, 4K a month for the last year. So that, that, was, a, that was a revenue stream where I was like, oh, I did not, that came out of nowhere. Like I wasn't expecting that at all. I and mean, again, that's what I love about YouTube is like every email uh, is like, who knows what this is gonna do? Sometimes I'll bring somebody on and they'll say, hey, do you wanna be our chief marketing officer? And it's like, whoa, I didn't expect I wasn't expecting that. And uh, so that's one of the things I love about YouTube is the opportunities it creates. Like I said before, when you get an audience, it opens up a lot of doors. Uh, but the Amazon influencer program is one of those. I haven't gotten into the Walmart creator program yet. But hey, if anybody from my community is watching, go research it, reach out and we'll work something out.
the thing that's interesting about the Walmart program, it's like a very big affiliate program. Unlike the Amazon Associates program where like you put your, you make a video and then like they put it on your, on their product page or whatever. This is like, I love this product. You can buy it at Walmart at this price kind of a thing, um, which I think is an interesting thing. Amazon's the only one I know that has where it's like you make videos about the product and then they put it on the page and that can help you earn those commissions because I have always been a big fan of the Amazon program for quite a few years. I, when I was like in this weird transition place with like, well, I was trying to figure out like, I don't know what I do when I grew up with my YouTube channel. I was able to turn the program and I made like 50 grand that year from it. So it was like really helpful. And then they made a whole bunch of changes and a lot of it went away, but like, it, it's still very passive and it can be a great way for people to do like, you get stuff from Amazon every day, like just make a video and put it up like a pra like a practice, you know? And what we found is you kind of can treat each video you put up as a mini revenue stream. So it's like, okay, I did this review for this golf club. And then it's like, okay, that makes $3 a day. So that's a $90 a month video. It took me two minutes, you know, and yeah. that's, uh, you just do that enough times. You just repeat that over and over and over again. I made that video six months ago and it's still $3 a day, $3 a day, $3 a day. And uh, so yeah, becomes income streams. I also mentioned too, I just got have getting started. It's not launched yet, but getting started with TikTok shop. So that's another thing. I haven't done a ton on TikTok, but everybody keeps telling me to. It's like, that's where all the, the youths are at. And uh, so I'm trying to uh, get onto TikTok, but TikTok shop is really big right now where you just basically get on a live and talk about different products. And then you, again, you get a big commission for the products that you talk about. And uh, so that's that's going to be something coming up here that I think would fit in that category, too. Yeah, I think that it has a lot of good potential, too, especially since you're already doing so much with live. I'm sure that it's great. Do you ever do the Amazon live? I have not done that yet. So, no. Maybe it's a good thing to try because you can multi-stream like to it. It's pretty okay. It's, it's maybe to start to start testing out for yourself. I'm so. I'm, I'm putting it on my to-do list to check this yeah. out, and I have time to do that because I have a staff now. You have a couple of other income streams in here that all kind of like float around like the same percentage. You have service, which I think is like your coaching that you do. Courses and digital products. What courses and digital products do you sell? Yeah, so um, I love making little cheap training courses is just I really enjoy it. I find a topic where it's like it's something that I've God has blessed me with that I find is not common for a lot of people is just when I see a problem like the solution just kind of the step by step solution to that problem just kind of comes into my head. And mm -hmm. so I found that's really conducive to making these little training courses that, you know, they're like 47 bucks or something like that. Just these cheap training courses. They solve one problem. There's maybe two out two or three hours of content in them. And so I put out a couple of those and I made a quick video about it, sent out to my email list. And then all of a sudden, oh, you made $2,000. And it's like, whoa, that's that's crazy. I just, you know, spent an afternoon and then you have a new income stream. And so I've really enjoyed that. So I have a bunch of training courses about like if you want to get into crypto, but you're new and don't know how to get started. Um, I have a training course on just putting together a plan to reach financial freedom. So a lot of people just like hope it will happen, but they don't actually have any concrete plans or steps that they're taking to reach it. And, you know, if you aim at what a Zig Ziglar entrepreneur said, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every single time. And uh, so just helping people think through that. And uh, so and then I'm, I'm putting out new little training courses probably once a month or so. I just something new I just put together. I kind of missed programming. So I put together Hey, for 10 people. If you have an app idea, I'll partner on that app idea with you for for 200 bucks. And then we 50 50 split the profit made from it. You give me the idea, you give me two hundred dollars. I'll put the I'll make an app from it and we'll share the revenue. And so just little things like that. Again, when you have an audience, it's like there's no limit to what you can do. It's like, hey, these people have this problem. I'll make a solution. And so I've absolutely loved that. Courses are amazing, too, because you make it once. And then I have training courses I made six or seven years ago that it'll still I'll get an email hey, you got a sale from this course. And I'm like, I don't even remember that course. Um, but it's still <laughs> this morning, I woke up $67 from a course that I made a lot, like six years ago. We also have some smaller percentages that we have around like consulting and speaking, obviously funding, um, AdSense, creator funds, and we also have membership. But you have an other category that makes up uh, almost 5% of your income. And I'm always so curious what people's others are. 
Oh man, I just I have so many just crazy little things going on. I do a lot of advising. So like after people do a video, one thing that I'm good at is since I was a tech guy, um, mm-hmm. but now I do YouTube is I'm really able to I know what normal people how they speak and I know how tech people speak. And so I sometimes have these tech people that come on and they're like, well, you know, the GPU on in this product is and I'm like, all right, so for those of you who are watching, you care about this, it's going to be a fast computer. And then they're like, Oh, yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I meant to say. And so then they afterwards, I've had probably five or six companies that are like, Hey, would you come on as just a marketing advisor just to like, go look at our website and change the language to just meet normal people where they're at instead of, you know, taking out jargon, honestly, has been like the biggest benefit for all of these companies has just been like, and I sometimes people don't even know that it's jargon because it's so part of what they do and so part of their life that they don't realize, oh, most people don't know what a GPU is or what the, you know, megahertz speed is or things like that. And uh, so that's kind of, that would be a big chunk of the other is just different advising. And then I'll have, I'll have companies that'll come in and say, Hey, can you just put out a YouTube short about this? Um, which maybe I could have put under sponsorship, but it's it's not like a regular thing. It's just kind of kind of one off is what I was thinking in the other category. And as always, James, what's your next money move? Next money move. So I've really been enjoying helping people less broadly, but more on a one by one basis. So you can put out content on YouTube. And, you know, what they say you can either reach a lot of people shallowly, shallowly, I don't know if that's a word, you can either reach a lot of people shallow, or you can reach a few people deep. And so I'm really, again, my goal is to help people achieve financial freedom. And I've done that broadly for a lot of people. But I'm looking to like find more programs where I can help specific people. And then I want to bring these stories onto the channel, like, hey, this person, they had like this app program, they had this app idea. We built it. It's making $2,000 a month. And uh, so I I just want to help people more one by one, like get this implemented. Uh, I understand you don't have a lot of upfront capital. So let's find a cheap way to get started. But that's what I'm really passionate about. So helping my audience with apps. I've started uh, helping my audience get started with Amazon KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, to publish their own books and things like that. There's different affiliate programs that I'm a part of where I tell them, hey, can one of my audience members go through your program and I'll kind of film a testimonial, the results, and put it on my channel in in exchange. And most programs are like, yeah, we would love that. And so then it's like one person gets a, you know, five, six thousand dollar program that changes their life. And uh, so just focusing more one by one, I just want to help people reach their goals. And so just looking for more ways to do that. I should say, too, that when you do that, it's not just philanthropic, okay? When you start providing value for people, in my experience, money always follows. If you go money first, a lot of times it doesn't work out. But if you go serving first and you go providing value first, money will flow where value is provided. That's the way capitalism works. And I, yeah, don't get me started on, on that or I'll go forever. Um, but just provide value. Who has problems that you can solve and money will come after that for sure. Awesome. Well, as always, thank you so much for your time, James. You can find everything that James talked about, links to all of his stuff, all the things that he's done over at our show notes, which is at thefundedyoutuber.com. Thank you so much again for your time, James. You were awesome and excellent to talk to. And I hope that so you got so much out of this. Until next time, go make that money, guys. Peace. Thanks so much for having me. Take care.